Hi, this is Nick Lowry, my buddy Andre Gorin, and we're here at Winsong Dojo. We're just going to take a peek here at a few fundamental ideas that uh, my teacher Carl Geis had for dealing with uh, people who want to punch and kick at you. The, uh, this is not a, uh, a system that's designed for, uh, for uh, becoming the ultimate fighter, it's not the ultimate strategy and things, but it is a useful set of strategic skills to exploit um, the way uh, strikers tend to, uh, to prefer to have the, the world arranged for them. Uh, one of the big observations that Mr. Geist made was that if you're dealing with somebody who's in a striking game or a boxing game and that has any sport context at all, they're confined by a body of, of rules or, or uh, in a broader sense, a set of presuppositions about what sort of conflict they're in. And so when you see things happen, in a boxing match, for instance, and the guys are out there boxing, and things are going, and then they wind up in the clinch. <laughs> what happens when they wind up in the clinch is the ref comes out and just splits them up. And that becomes sort of a normative part of how they consider the world works. Uh, we know from the more modern sense of what's going on in martial arts these days that, well, you know, <laughs> in an MMA match, that doesn't happen at all. It goes to the ground next. We've been doing go to the clinch and into the ground for a long time, basically. We don't think about it that way. But the forms of Aikido and Judo have that sort of built in. And so the first big strategy uh, to exploit the striking art, generally, is to always go to the clinch. Now, how do we get there is the next, the, the next part of the equation that, that winds up being important. And for this, Carl described it as covering the gloves. He said in boxing, there's a rule that as the man's boxing and you're boxing, it's all cool, but you can't just come up and put your palms on their gloves and ride them. But if you do this very long, that the ref is going to stop that too. Again, it's against the rules. It's going overtly towards a grappling idea. Covering the gloves becomes a really powerful technique just in terms of handling somebody's hands. And it, uh, it has to be done in a particular way. If I come up, he puts his hands up, I immediately step in and cover these gloves. Uh, I don't want to have full extension in my arms. I don't want my arms to be out here stiff because if they're out here stiff, it gives him stuff to push away from. It gives him support and actually things that he can pop off of this. And yes, he can break free relatively easy. When you put your hands up on a man's gloves, the first thing you have to have in mind is that one is deflection. As he starts to move and this blow comes in, you just want to deflect it just as it gets to you. Just take any pressure off of it. If it. As it's coming up the middle, boom, just slide it off, boom. And it might touch you a little bit, but you just don't let it get the full contact. If I concentrate on it, go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's trying to bop me a bunch, and this thing is just sort of floating around in space, and as it, the power comes out and his arm gets to the length of extension, it becomes a weak lever for him, it becomes a strong lever for me, just to cause a little bit of deflection. It's really all we're after. Now, I can't do that if I keep my hands stiff out here, my arms stiff. My arms are stiff, yeah, it'll pop it loose, nail me almost immediately. Very easy for him to fight. So you have to have relaxed arms with this, and you have to move fluidly, and be able to walk around like it ain't nothing. Now, when a hand does get free, that's when it gets interesting because from the Aikido perspective, or the, the Aikido within this particular tradition perspective, that's when we get our free shot. So slow, slow, slow. As a hand pulls free, boom, we want to come right up the middle. We want to train that automatically, that as soon as a hand breaks free from the cover of the gloves condition, we're coming straight into their face. And we're ideally taking a rising shot that comes up under the chin, braces the head back fully, and displaces him at least four inches backwards. So it's not just a whack. I'm not just slapping him. I'm not patting him on the head. It's a shot that wants to actively displace him. A little step comes along with it. The, um, so that's the basic strategy for the hands. As the man's coming up, we put our hands up, we come in, we enter. Note that you don't stand on the outside and dance around. If I stand out here very much, yeah, I'm being a moving target for the guy. He's gonna chase me down and tap me. 
I just, whoa, whoa, I'm playing a defensive game. This is another big thing that Mr. Geis had to say about it. That whenever you're in a, in a conflict, whether it's a judo match or a boxing match or some kind of martial arts conflict of any kind, you really have to go on the offensive. You really have to take the initiative away from the whole situation. Because as long as they are in the active mode and you're in the reactive mode, you're actually going to be behind the curve. He said <clears throat> one, of, uh, one of his chief uh, instructors under him, a man named Rick Pollard, we called him Moose back in the day, he told me that from what he'd understood from Mr. Geis, that once you come out into a judo match, for instance, you should be attacking from the moment of contact. You should attack immediately and continually because if nothing else, even if your attacks are completely blown, you have a, uh, it, it offers you a window of opportunity that isn't otherwise there. If your attacking mind gets out after him and puts him into a reactive defensive mind state, and all he can do is just fend off your attack, it takes typically around four to five seconds, four to five seconds, for the guy to regroup, get his act together, and be able to come back and haunt you with his own aggressive ideas. Now that seems like, well, that's three to five seconds. Well, that's a long time. <laughs> it's a very long time when people are swinging at you, trying to take your feet out from under you, turn you upside down, throw you on your head. Three to five seconds seems like an eternity. And so if you can provoke the defensive mindset in them, if you can begin to overwhelm them and give them things to react to immediately and continually, your odds go up, your probability goes higher. And you're able to enter directly keep them on the defensive, and hopefully they have a tough time ever launching a, a consistent and meaningful attack at you from that point forward. And so as a strategic idea, it's the offense is a good defense thing in a, in a very uh, fundamental way. So there's no dancing around getting back. Dancing around getting back, trying to hide from the guy who's going to get your head knocked in. Taking a step back, Come in and I back off because he scares me somehow. Taking the step back already offers him a huge opening. Offers him an opening that he's gonna, if he's a real monster, and Andre's not a real monster with punch and kicking, he, he hangs out with some, but he's, he's all right. But I tell you what, uh, uh, there's plenty, plenty folks that if you take a half step or a step back in the engagement, boy, howdy, they come right up the middle and turn into a flurry. They're a damn tornado coming at you because they're doing the offense as a good defense strategy too. They want to come in and overwhelm you. And so you not, must be very cognizant of how you use your feet. We're at my, or right around my, and I'm watching him in the eyes. His hands come up. I immediately want to come in on this. I don't want to give him a chance to get into it and do mischief to me. I want to go straight to him. I don't get off the line or anything. Straight up the middle. Cover the gloves. That's the first shot. So in this sense, you're not even thinking about it like a defensive Aikido mindset at all. You're thinking more like, what are we doing? Yeah, like I'm going to be uke. <laughs> like the uke, if I were doing a, the 23 or the 17, and we're walking in, boom, yeah. I just step right in. He was doing okay. I was doing okay. My uke beat his. It's not even a get out of the way idea at all. It's pure offense. It just happens to be pure offense that's damn efficient. It's damn efficient because it's not storing energy backward to go forward. It's not storing energy right to go left. It's not storing the energy down to go up. It's happening with very efficient movement that comes out of our walking guide. It comes out learning to move with the center. It comes out of learning to coordinate the hands with the center in a straight line. Rather than things where the arm has to bend and then come out and launch. And so fundamentally with the hands, we have something that he comes up the middle, I come up the middle, yeah, here we are. I want to get into his center right off the bat. I want to control that and stay in there until it resolves, until it resolves. Another thing that he would point out was that if you cover both hands to the face and they're swinging around it, trying to hit you in the face, yeah. They may make some contact, but it's not very meaningful contact. It may touch you. But if you have two arms riding right in the middle right here, wow, he boxed my ears a little bit. But the price he had to pay, you can comment it to boxing my ears a little bit, 
was jumping backwards on his head. And if he has any aggressive bounce in him at all, the tendency becomes to actually invert. <laughs> that bounciness that people like to do to become really hyped up into their, into their striking game becomes something that turns into an, a, a form of ukimi that's pretty hard to survive. They land largely on their back of their heads. So I encourage you, if you practice any of this, to do it really slow and really careful. <laughs> Because as speed picks up and you start getting into that, whoo, that exciting kind of feeling, the falls can be kind of crazy. So be cautious about that. So all that goes towards dealing with the hands and dealing with entering directly to the face and finding ways to open him up for that. Uh, and also deflecting. That if you're covering gloves and he's throwing a flurry at you, you're just splitting him off a little bit. The second major part of this whole game that came into play that uh, Mr. Geist taught several years after this was that watching the man, if he has, he has the, the uh, tendency or the training to be into kicking, to picking one foot up off the ground, moving his ass through space sideways, putting his weight on the other foot, and then throwing that first foot up to hit you with it. If that is something that is part of their game, the natural thing that happens, if I'm going to be in on at this camera, and I begin to get ready to kick you with my right foot, and I'm not a kicker. I have no formal training in kicking whatsoever. But just the physical dynamic of doing it, I have to put weight on my left foot to pick my right foot up and kick at you. I have to put weight on my right foot to pick my left foot up and kick at you. I have to put weight on my back foot to pick my front foot up and kick at you. I have to put weight on my front foot to pick my back foot up and kick at you. You always have to have the weight shift well, in anything that's not a jumping kick, you always have to have the weight shift. And, and with jumping kicks, by the way, they gotta, they gotta kick both legs back, basically. They have to store a bunch of damn energy to jump. But given that they're going to do regular kicking phenomenon, what will precede all types of kicks is this little side action, or this little back or forth action. And you watch it on their nose. If you have normal eye contact, you're doing Mitsuki, straight into their eyes, you're doing the distant mountains thing, but your basic focal point is their nose. Yeah, as he begins to load up, he's back here, and his nose tracks and winds up right over his supporting knee. And I'm watching, no, we're not doing kicks, we're just loading up. Boom, it's right here, over his supporting knee. And so the point at which I'm saying, boom, <laughs> when his structure lines up, that's the point we train ourselves, and this is a very, Careful little training drill, you want to do this nice and light and easy, not to injure each other. As he shifts his weight, boom, I want to reach out and just step. I put my foot under that nose. I don't look down. I don't look down at my target. If he shifts over, I don't go hung and then try to step on that. Do not ever do that. Because again, just like stepping back, if you look down, you break your contact and your focal point changes, big openings occur. The flurry will come, they will commence to beating on you. So watch out for that. Watching him in the eyes, his nose shifts wherever it's going to shift. Yeah, and I just want to reach out and step and touch his knee and brush it lightly. Now, as that's really occurring, when it happens, boom, you would step on it and actually put a body weight through it. Step into the damn knee. But again, that becomes a little bit dangerous. His leg is supporting his weight right here. Boom, you step on that thing and you really deliver power to it. If you're doing it at full speed, chances are you're locking it straight. Chances are you may have injured his knee right there. Okie doke. So you've got to be a little cautious of that. If you have a bit of judo in you too, you'll notice that even when you're short, you wind up sliding down and landing on his foot. And if you have any, any tendencies toward that, that's okay too because that's also the, where the foot sweep lives. If you do wind up doing any sort of judo-esque foot sweeping reaping ideas, you want to make sure they're the type that goes straight through it. You don't want to spend any time going, oh, I think I'll get ready and then sweeping. You don't want any side action at all. Whatever you're going to do with your legs should replicate this step that just steps straight in. It should come straight out, foot goes under the nose, lands at or about the knee. You can nicely slide down if you like. And that will give you a basic range of things that hmm, become a little bit overwhelming because top side, you're covering the gloves. Bottom side, you're touching whatever might start becoming a support mechanism for a kick. 
And that could be a kick or a knee or whatever is going to pick that other leg up. And potentially you're also standing on a support leg. And once you own that guy's foot, it's damn hard for him to come back from it. Whenever somebody's foot is pinned to the ground, it's as if their reflexes become that of somebody twice as heavy as they are. So if Andre's a 150 pound guy, and I nail one foot to the ground, he now operates with the reflexes of a 300 pound guy, which is fine for a 300 pound guy if they're used to it. But you take a 150 pound guy and suddenly you force them into the position of being a 300 pound guy and they, they react poorly. Their nervous system is not ready to accommodate that condition. And so just stepping on the foot becomes a thing. It's a dumb little thing, but a pretty effective little thing. So to review, what we got is covering the gloves. We got free hand goes to the face, and it could be both free hands. Like, oh, straight in. We have covering the feet and the knees. And from range, if we're at my distance or something like my distance, that becomes a fairly good sized step. You're reaching out and actively touching that. It may turn into a throw, may turn into an injured leg, may turn into a brush down and step on the foot. You don't really care. Again, if you do a little judo, it might turn into foot sweeps or reach. You can step in and say, oh, I think I'll do a little touch that takes his foot out from under him. All those become highly potentialized um, and fairly automatic. There is no backing up. There is no defensive. There is no get back. You think, well, where's all the Tory stuff? Where's all the cool stuff we do in Aikido? Why is, it, why is this just straight in stuff? We have a thing going on. We reach in. We cover the gloves. We step in. He makes a swing or he tries to get free. Wow, look where we wind up. Well, now that you're here, now that you've gone to the trouble to engage him and he's gone to some sort of mess and you've stepped in to, to do your thing, now that this sort of relationship occurs, you have the whole curriculum. <laughs> you've got everything from soup to nuts. Once you're in the zone where you have all the targets and he's out there in space, you can go ahead and do all the cool Aikido in the world. It's fine, do all the Torrey oriented stuff. But the thing that saves your ass right off the bat ain't Tory. Ain't Tory. If I try to be Tory right off the bat, say, oh, I'm just going to pull down straight. Wow. He chases me down and thumps on me. He chases me down and thumps, as he well should. Because why? I've created an opening. My overwhelming balance break didn't overwhelm his ass. <laughs> and he came right up the middle and started whopping. That's how it ought to be. So right off the bat, hmm, as soon as the hands come up, we're into it, we want to cover those gloves, we want to give him problems to solve, and then we can create our own problems and say, well, there he is. Now that's a little artificial because I'm sitting here talking to a camera, but basically, once you have entered, once you have done a reamy action and gone straight into him, once you've done this right up the center line, perhaps with the foot, you have done the job that our great ukes do, which is the efficient straight in attack and you have entered correctly to give them real problems to solve. You have not fallen prey to their game. You haven't said, oh, he's boxing. I better box too. <laughs> Which, you know, who's the better boxer is going to win that deal? If he starts kicking, I don't step up. I'm going to kick him back. No, 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 no. There are people that spend inordinate numbers of hours, thousands, tens of thousands of hours, kicking things and kneeing things and getting really, really, really good and fast crazy damn fast at kneeing and kicking. But the weird thing is, the human dynamics of the body are such that that foot speed might be blinding. That hand speed might be over the top, might be 115 miles an hour. Crazy fast, no way you can possibly catch it. But the center of gravity speed, that speed that sets things up, that speed that, that gets ready to launch, that speed that is the speed in which they are accommodating the, hey, I gotta get my act in gear to go after this guy. That speed is not significantly different for anybody, anybody on earth. They all move about the same pace when they're doing the, hey, I'm putting my weight over here to get ready to kick you, or hey, I'm putting my hands up to get ready to thump you. They might come up quick, but that just makes it more exciting when you step in quick. <laughs> so. You have to play the game at the place where it's playable. If you get out there and try to match hand speed and foot speed with this thing that's going like a bat out of hell, 
Wow, you're too late. You're too late. When that's happening to you, good luck. But basically, if you catch it right off the bat, say, hey, cool. Now you get to play your game. That's cool. Now we get to whisper sweet nothings to him, spirit him down like a gentle little person. <laughs> talk to him, talk to him very kindly. You can do the I key thing at that point. But at the initial moment of engagement, I key is penetration. I key is going straight into him. I key is that Irimi function. And so even Mr. Tomiki said this. He said everything you do in Aikido is first a blow. Is first coming in with, with a strike. And once that has happened, once the strike has occurred, well then you might do a wonderful throw. But basically everything is based on the action that we take when we're coming in to be uke. We think of uke as the loser. We think of uke as the guy who's getting God all the time who's falling down and getting slammed. But in the real, real world, uke actually holds the key to saving your ass. Uke is actually the most efficient attack we can deal with. And you train yourself to be a correct uke, wow, you become a serious problem for the rest of the world. So that's about all I have to say about that. Thank you.